Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we're going to be going over all the gestures you need to know with the iPhone 10. I'll also be going over some cool tips as well as the features of the side button as now it performs a lot more than just powering down. Also, I'll be showing you towards the end a really cool trick that'll allow you to create a digital home button on your phone. So if you miss the home button, there is a way to get it back. Anyway, let's jump right into this and get started. To kick things off, a basic feature that we always used was exiting applications. And traditionally in the past, what you would do is press on the home button. However, without it now, you have to use a gesture. The gesture is pretty simple. You'll see this little line at the bottom. All you have to do to exit and return home from an application is just swipe up. Same thing in any application, wherever you are, if you wanna just return to your home screen, just swipe up from the bottom. Another gesture that we need to use now is multitask. In the past, we would double click the home button and it would open up all of our applications that are open in the background. With the iPhone 10, you need to swipe up from the bottom and hold and it'll open up those applications. From here, you can scroll through them the same way we did in the past and open them up like so. But if you wanna close them, what you need to do is actually tap and hold and you'll see some minus icons appear at the top. You can either tap those or just swipe up as we did in the past. Now, if you don't have those icons up there and you do try to swipe up, all it's going to do is bring you back to your home screen. A new gesture that was added with the iPhone 10 is a gesture that allows you to move between applications quickly. So again, we'll focus on the bottom here. We can see we have our little line. We'll just swipe to the right and you can see I'm moving across my open applications. Now you can do the same thing, swiping left, and it gives you a quick way to move and access various applications you have open. Unlocking your phone and paying for things using Apple Pay used to be able to be done through Touch ID, which was the fingerprint scanner. Well, now with the iPhone 10, it's done through Face ID. So what you need to do is just press on the side button and you'll show your face and you see it's unlocked at the top there. Now from here, you just swipe up from the bottom and you've now opened up your phone. Similarly, you can use this same feature to pay for things using Apple Pay as well as in the App Store. You do need to set it up, so you need to go to the Face ID and passcode section of your settings application. Control Center has been moved as well. Because we now swipe up from the bottom to exit applications, you do need to swipe down from the top right to open your Control Center. It does look a little bit different than it would on traditional iPhones, mainly the battery percentage, which you can now see when you pull that down. However, you can no longer access or see it from the main screen. So you do need to pull down from the right and that'll give you access to the control center as well as your battery percentage. Now, not all new features or features we used to access with the home button in the past are going to be done through gestures. For example, if you want to access Siri, we used to be able to press the home button. Now it's a long press on the side button here and you can see that Siri opened, and that's pretty much how you access Siri now, other than just saying, hey Siri. Now with that side button, you can actually customize some of its functionality. So if you find that you don't use Siri, maybe you wanna change it up, you could do so. So open up the settings application, tap general, and we're gonna tap accessibility. We're gonna scroll down to where it says side button here, tap on that, and you can modify the click speed. So by default, it's set like so. You can set it to a slow, a slowest, and you can see right here, it says adjust the speed required to double or triple click the side button, so whatever options it has. Then at the bottom here, you can set what pressing and holding the side button does. So you have Siri, you can set it to voice control, or you can turn it off completely. So with voice control set here, if we just press and hold, now it opens up voice control. Now voice control is kind of like Siri, except it's very basic and it's not going to use your data. So you can use it for anything that doesn't involve uh, data. So internet searches or anything like that. You can see it's giving you a rundown of what it can do. Another thing that's changed is how you power down the phone. In the past, you would hold on the power button, which is now the side button, and it would then close the phone. But as I just showed you, that activates Siri. So what you need to do now to actually power down the phone is press on the side button at the same time that you're pressing on the volume rocker. So we'll do that, hold it, and you'll be taken to the SOS emergency section here. Now from here, you can swipe to the right to power it off. You can also enable the SOS security settings in the settings application. Once the phone is off, it's just a simple press to power it back on. 
And when you see the Apple logo, it'll begin powering itself back on. Now, while the phone is locked like this, you can use a feature called tap to wake. And that's simple. You just tap on the screen and it'll wake it up. You can modify this setting as well. Settings, general, again, we gotta go to accessibility, but this time we're just going to scroll down to where it says tap to wake and you can turn it on or off. The way we take screenshots has also changed with old iPhones. It was traditionally pressing on the power button and home button simultaneously, but now you need to press on the side button and the upper volume rocker simultaneously, and that'll create your screenshot. From here, you can now open the screenshot like so, modify it if you would like, tap done, delete it or save it to your photos. Performing a reset on your phone now has changed as well. Traditionally, you would only do this if your phone crashes, freezes, has some bugs, or you can't access the power down option on your phone. Now in the past, it's been done through a few different methods and few different button combinations, but now with the iPhone 10, it's done like this. First, you're going to press and release on the upper rocker, then the lower rocker, then you're going to press and hold on the side button. So let's do that. Press, release, press, release, hold. And now the phone has powered itself down. Just click on the side button to reset and it'll power itself back on. Now, anytime you shut down your phone or power it off in this method, you're going to have to enter in your password. Face ID as well as touch ID will not work. So we'll just enter our password and we're back. Some notable mentions that you may already know, but just in case you don't, or you wanna refresh your memory, here's some other gestures you can use. And then we'll go over how you can create that digital home button if you'd prefer it, and you can place it anywhere you want on the screen. So for starters, pulling down from the middle accesses your search. So if you wanna search for things on your phone or on the internet, you can do so just typing in the search bar. You can also swipe to the right to access the Siri suggestions tab here where you can add your own widgets to this section. So if you wanna add things like weather widgets or stock widgets, as you can see here, you can do that and then quickly access them just by swiping. Another option is the swiping back in various applications. So for example, if we're in the application settings here and we wanna just go back to the first page, just swipe to the right. It works the same way no matter how far deep you are. So just swiping right to go back each time rather than having to tap at the top. And this will work in many applications that take you from page to page. Next, 3D Touch. If you press and hold on any application that has 3D Touch abilities, you'll see some options here which you can access. Again, it's a press and hold to access those features. If you wanna turn it off, I have some videos on that. Just check out my channel for 3D Touch. You can also adjust the sensitivity of how it works. Now, with that being said, another thing that may mix up people is deleting applications. This, you tap and you just hold on applications. Now, you might know how this works, but exiting this section used to be pressing the home button. So now, you're trying to get out of it. I've seen this already, but what you have to do, just swipe up just like you would with the home button. So any features that you would have used to exit things with the home button, remember it's a swipe up and that'll traditionally move you away from it. All right, so now that the basics are out of the way, let's get into this digital home button. And this is actually going to give you digital options as well. So what you need to do is tap on the settings application and we're gonna to scroll to general and then we're gonna tap on accessibility. Now from here, what we're gonna do is scroll down to where it says assistive touch. We'll tap on that. Now you can customize assistive touch. So for starters here, you can see it custom actions, a single tap opens a menu. If we do that, we can set it to home. You can set it to any one of these if you want as well. So we're gonna set it to home. We're gonna turn on assistive touch and you'll see we have this little digital button here. Now, because we set the custom action here and you can do whatever you want with these, when we tap on it, it's going to take us home. And this works in any application, you'll see it here. I keep it just on the right side when I used it in the past, this was available. It just has some more options. You wanna go home, just tap on it. So if you are finding it difficult or hard to remember to swipe up, a simple way is just to tap on this, it'll take you home. Now, if you wanna play around with any of these settings, you can definitely do so. You open the settings application again, go to the assistive touch section. Now, by default, if you don't set this custom action, it's going to be set to open menu. And some people like this because when you tap on it, you get the full menu of things you can do. I'll do a full in-depth 
rundown of how this assistive touch works, but it gives you a whole bunch of abilities that may be a little bit quicker than using some of the gestures if you have a hard time remembering them, or just in general, some people prefer them. So I'll show you that in a future video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna check that out, as well as more tips, tricks, and tutorial videos on the iPhone 10. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. The full playlist is in the description as well. And also, if you're interested, a lot of people ask me, this is my wireless charging stand, so it actually charges my phone. It plugs in via USB in the back, and then it just has the wireless charging pad here. I'll link you in the description because I have been getting some questions about it. Anyway, tons more videos to come, and I will see you in the next one.